Red for Sahar Reporters. And uh, my question is uh, very direct. You were on BBC yesterday and you said you had not spoken to President Yaradra for the 60 days that he's been gone. And yet, you are <coughs> moving around the world claiming that you are representing the President and his own interests, whereas you haven't had any mandate from that President in the last 60 days. So how can we trust that you, being someone who have acted on behalf of every government, both legitimate and illegitimate, I know you supported Abacha very strongly, that you are not just going around doing your own wish because Nigeria has no leadership at this point, you know, and as you have done consistently when you did wish you did under Abacha, that again, you are doing this because this is what is convenient and the Nigerian people have been rendered powerless uh, at this time and that uh, you just have done what you wish could be done because again, the Nigerian country has now has no president uh, that could have even given you the power that you claim you have been exercising now. Well, uh, your question is so insulting and so abusive and so disgraceful. Does not even convey an educated mind. That's that's not the question I'm asking. Not it's, not, it's not it's not the question I'm asking. I'm asking you a question that I expect you to answer, not to insult me back. You, you you have to answer me because you are the one who has called us here to come and insult us with this whole rigma rule about how the Nigerian what do you mean everybody is in charge of this place? Is anybody in charge of this? What are you trying? This is not Nigeria. You answer the question and forget about harassing me. All right. I guess I, I, I will intervene. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll only intervene in this way. What I'll do is I'm going to ask, as I understand it, yes. ask your question, you know? Yes, you should answer my question. Okay. All right. And then, then we'll move on from that. Yeah. I guess the question, I'm just, it's not to rephrase it, and I understand, I, I, I understand that, 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 that uh, you were offended by how it was asked. But I guess, I mean, I asked at the stake out how, when you last spoke that to the president. No, you did. You did. I understand. Don't ask his own. No, no. Okay. I guess the, but, but I mean, uh, to me, there is a question of. Is it your question? It is my question. Your question. Go ahead and ask. Okay. My question would be. Right. My question. Would, my question would be if, and I heard the same interview on BBC. If, for you know, for these reasons, you haven't spoken with the president. It's a very miserable fellow. Don't don't insult me, He's minister. Why would you say I'm miserable? Yeah, because I'm miserable. exercising my right as a Nigerian to ask you a question. You've been doing this for too long. You can't be insulting me. What do you mean I'm miserable? I think it is you that is miserable. Come to Nigeria and help the place. Why, are you Why not? Why not? And it's going to be a matter of time. All right. I saw, I'm going I'm to rephrase yes. the question. So thank you. Answer. It may sound that I'm, I'm told by a colleague that it may be the last question because you have to go to the airport. But I will ask it, and hopefully thank we'll you. get an answer. I had some Darfur questions, too, but we'll stick with this one. If, if both legally and just sort of in a common sense way, and in the way that most ministers take their, their direction from, from, you know, from their president or prime minister, if you haven't spoken with the president since he's been in Saudi Arabia, do you, do you, uh, what do you say to those that say that, you're, that, that you don't have a mandate? You said that you're on auto, autopilot, but you also say that you wish you'd received his, his guidance on some issues. Uh, there's been the issue of the, of the, of the, you know, the, the, single, the hijacker and the U.S.'s response to it. Various things have come up. Do you have, I mean, do you feel that you, you have a mandate? Can you read the president's mind? Do you acknowledge that there's some issues that, about whether, you know, whether you have the, the correct mandate at this time? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, under our constitution, ministers do not sit in the National Assembly. So even if you were sitting in the National Assembly before and you were made a minister, you resign. We are appointed by the president, but we are just described as not ministers of the president, we are described as ministers of the Federal Republic and members of the Federal Executive Council. Now that appointment again is, uh, the president has no choice uh, on the issue of how many ministers he will appoint, because the constitution makes it mandatory that there must be at least one minister from a state that the president may like you and think you should be his foreign minister but in appointing you he recognizes the fact that you are from a state like in my own case I'm from Abia state so I represent Abia state in the pre-executive council I reflect the position of Abia state in the pre-executive council 
So the mandate we have is provided for in the Constitution because we are members of the Federal Executive Council from our various states. And it, but it just happened that we are given portfolios for what I feel different and all that. So because our position is prescribed for in the Constitution, that defines our mandate. That we go there as the highest policy making body representing the whole country to speak, this time not just for Abia, but to speak for the whole, whole country. That's what we are called ministers of the Federal Republic and not ministers of the President. Now, I have never, as I go around, suggested that when I speak, I'm speaking for President Yarato. I've been careful to say that I'm speaking on behalf of the Federal Government of Nigeria. It doesn't mean I'm not speaking for President Yarato. But my emphasis has been on the Federal Government of Nigeria, even when the President is physically around and is in Abuja and he gives me directives. I still speak as a matter of style that I'm speaking on behalf of the Federal Government of Nigeria. But I'm the Foreign Minister of Nigeria. I'm not just the Minister of the President. I'm not the Foreign Minister for President Yarakwa. I'm the Foreign Minister of Nigeria. And um, like I said earlier on, but maybe that was not understood or heard. This President does not believe in micromanaging uh, foreign policy. I also mentioned that the party, the ruling party of which I was National Secretary, has a position on foreign policy, and I was the National Secretary for two years. So I bring to this job a considerable amount of experience. That does not make me a robot. That makes me also understand what is the foreign policy expectations of the federal government and of Nigeria. There's no substitute for the president being there. I've made that point clear. We are not enjoying his absence. And I wish that to be addressed with the sensitivity it requires. And I was candid enough to say that. So I'm not committing any illegality by representing the federal government of Nigeria because I was appointed by the president who has not removed me from the cabinet. No illegality is being committed. No lack of legitimacy is in place. The constitution is clear as to how we got appointed, and that constitution protects me. And I think that that point is very, is, uh, and it was very well met. And I'm competent to do that. And I'm pushing uh, the national interest of Nigeria, which is beyond the beyond any individual.